Hey guys, I'm James and this is my E36 1992 and in today's video we're going to be looking at why the front bumper on this car is sagging and what we can do about it. Let's get to it. So the problem I've got is that this bumper appears to not be connected in this corner. It's always sagged a little and kind of the inner wheel arch line has never really fitted properly and I've always wondered what the problem is. Now, some of you may have seen this car before, some of you may have spotted already. It is not a regular E36, it's an Alpina, uh, and it's an Alpina B2.5. It was a UK model only, converted, not at the factory, but here in the UK. This, however, although it's an Alpina bumper, the bit that's Alpina is just this bit at the bottom. And actually, as we're about to see when I take it off, what you'll see is that they just convert a regular SE bumper. So everything I'm going to tell you applies to SE cars. I can't speak to the M Sport cars with their M Sport bumpers. I assume they're the same, but because I don't have one, I can't say. The only other E36 I've had was also an SE, but that didn't have a failing bumper because it was a much, much newer car at the time. Anyway, let's get this bumper off and see what we're working with. So this isn't intended to be a video about how to remove your bumper from E36. There's loads of information out there on YouTube about that. But the basics are 13 mil socket, two bolts this side, two bolts that side, and then lots of fiddly bolts up underneath connecting to the wheel arch liner. And if you're lucky enough to still have your under tray, an under tray. <laughs> Once those four bolts are out, I've already removed the bolts from underneath, or the little fiddly screws. We need to remove some of these trim pieces. Again, I've already done this, but I want to give you a tip here. It pulls out here in this direction, but whatever you do, don't try and pull it out here because as I'm about to show you, it's got hooks. So it's these hooks, if you were to pull it out, you will break these hooks. It sort of needs to slide in and then clip in. So basically, if you just think you have to pull it all this way, all in one smooth movement, then you'll be fine. So having removed the bumper from the car, which is down here, um, what I've noticed already is that firstly, the bracket on this side is intact here and it's sat there let's just do that but if we come over here we see is the bracket is missing and if we go to the car we see that it's still here on the car and that is the cause on this side particularly in my car of the sagging is that the bracket and the bumper had basically come apart now i've had this off before as you can probably tell um, to investigate this and I thought while I'm what I'd found was worthy of a bit of a video just to anyone else who's suffering with the same problem in terms of what to do next this is the bracket in this side correctly it's clearly got these sort of plastic welds that are factory and I think what's happened is just over time it's broken and it's pulled off and you think oh damn how am I going to deal with plastic welds what it looks like BMW kind of thought this through because what you can see here uh, are just two holes, if we look around the other side, the two holes, they, they would get covered by the trim panel anyway. Um, and then, as we can see here, we've got a couple of holes that match up on the bracket itself. And in fact, I've done a test already on the other side. And what you can then do is just get yourself some self-tapping screws and tap in through those holes into the bracket on the back. And you get a lovely solid mount, which kind of does mean that you don't need to deal with plastic mold uh, plastic welding type thing and you can get your bracket back on nice and solidly so that's what we need to do just take advantage of the fact that bmw kind of thought this through with these two holes and these corresponding two holes down here so for the repair what we need then is just a couple of self-tapping screws i found these in my garage i'm really sorry i don't know what size they are but i've worked out that they fit and then just a screwdriver and then it is just a case of aligning the bracket up at the back using the existing plastic weld mounts as the guide and the holes obviously and then just get your self tappers and then just tighten everything up super simple so 
And there we go, nice and easy. I'm not sure if these are stainless or whether they're just regular steel, but it would be a recommendation to say get stainless if you can, because what you don't want is these rusting and giving you rust damage that will then seep out of the cover that goes around here. Um, so stainless would be best. But there we have a nice strong mounting point there, probably stronger than original to be fair. And then can go straight back on the car. Just as an aside while we're here though, here's what I was mentioning. This bit here is our Alpina product. And all they've done, <laughs> did this in the, in the dealer in uh, where they converted it, they've just sort of cut out the, the SE part of the bumper. Not very nicely to be, at, to be fair. If you look up here, you might like, literally cut it, I don't know, with a jigsaw or something. It looks really ropey and not even a straight line. But from the outside, you never know. So with the bumper now on the car, I've got a really nice firm fit here. There's no sag, there's no wobbling. I haven't uh, done the screws up underneath. Um, I'm missing a fog light here I'm fixing, but already it's much more solid. Just using those four bolts, there's two here, two on the other side, on the other side of the front, and then these mounts now secure. Super pleased with that. Nice, easy, cheap fix for once. So guys, hope you found that helpful. If you did, send me a message, send me a like, and I look forward to coming to you in a new video very soon. Thanks and goodbye.